100 cookies is a lot of cookies. I have many more cookies to decorate today, so you guys will probably be seeing me down in the kitchen because Chips is gonna be gone, giving his finals to the first round of students who now have those Christmas tree cookies to snack on uh, for quite a lot of the day. So in between processing my videos, I'm gonna pop down there and do more batches of cookies, but that was so fun. Looking back on it, like one, my feet were so sore and exhausted last night because standing there for like five hours rolling out the dough, mixing the dough, rolling it out, putting it in the fridge. And then by the time I was done with all five batches of sugar cookies, it was time to take the first batch out and start cutting it out into Christmas trees. So that was uh, like physically challenging. Instead of saying tiring and exhausting, let's reframe a little bit and say it was just challenging. And I met the challenge. Uh, and it was really cool because I've never used like vegetable based dye before to color food, but it was really fun. It was not quite as vibrant as you get with like the chemical stuff, but it actually made the sprinkles pop out a lot more. So that was a lot of fun. So yeah, I've got more Christmas trees today and you guys will probably be seeing some of that. But yeah, I can't believe we're leaving in like four days, but we've got into a really good routine here. A whole bunch of things are planned. Uh, and when it comes to work, it just feels so good just to be able to let go. I am shifting all of my systems, shifting everything I'm doing. So of course it's gonna be a little bit wonky donkey this month. And when I say let go, that doesn't mean I'm not gonna do anything. Just my original plans for December included over 135 videos. And uh, let's just say, maybe if I had started a couple months ago, that would have been like pff, easy peasy. Enjoy the avalanche of series series coming right up <laughs> but because I've kind of changed everything about how I I live every day uh, I don't put in that wake up at 8 and start recording and keep going until 1 or 2 in the morning lifestyle anymore instead I woke up this morning and I did some stretches I started my joy journal for the day and then I biked for 25 miles and I'm glowing with happiness and also my lunch because that was a lot of biking it was a little tiring but in a good way Anyway, I'm rambling to start the day because I have a lot to do, so you can tell I'm actually distracted. I'm like glancing over my schedule going, Psyduck might finally come out of the Pokeball today. Thank goodness. I want to do some star stable in that frozen forest. We've got some cats to take care of. We've got this, we've got that. Uh, and with four more days left, it's so exciting to be able to look at my schedule and be like, there's at least one thing per day so I can take off the stress and just look forward to like, instead of going, there's four days left. Oh my gosh, what am I gonna do? I don't have anything. I don't have enough done. I'm looking at it and I'm going, there's four days left and that means four four days that I can try to tell tons of adventures and have fun and see how many layers of videos I can get in for the rest of the month. Uh, and I will be recording when we go to North Carolina, so technically it's just like having a week off. <laughs> Which, now that I reframe that again, I feel like such a goose for being so stressed about this. But it all comes down to what people expected from my schedule, what I expected of myself, and the beautiful beautiful, joyful art that I am learning of letting go. So enough of that rambling. Let's go ahead and have the magic begin for the day. So let the magic begin. I don't believe it. Like, I'm not gonna believe it when I flip to it. But I mean, 11. 11? What am I gonna do when this advent calendar is over? I kind of want to make like a little advent calendar to share with you guys for every month and like build it over different little monthly themes and just set it up for myself somehow. That would be so fun. And actually there were some people in the comments, you guys, saying, oh, I wish I knew that the sticky advent calendar was a thing. Uh, I would have gotten it. And that was really fun to see that other people are interested in this. But it made me wonder like, man, I wonder if I did like a zoo advent calendar calendar like a zoo crafting or like a, a pixel biology advent calendar what would it be and the answer came to me stickers stickers 
There's a package out for delivery right now. It's so good that Chips is not here. I rushed delivered it. It's the calendar. I'm gonna have the calendar to show to you guys, the squirrel calendar. And then I also have some Patreon stuff that is going to be arriving. I'm really hoping that the other special perks I got for the Patreon postcards will arrive before we leave. It says it's coming in a couple days. Mm, it's gonna be pushing it, but we'll see. But all right, yeah, there's gonna be the squirrel calendar hopefully to show off to you guys today, some of the really cool postcard snippets, and of course, this little sticker, and I might take you guys down to the kitchen to keep me company while I frost the other, so we did 40 last night, the other like 120 cookies. <laughs> So let's see what the magic is for today before I get started diving into snowy forest and star stable, taking care of my dragons and dragon veil world, hopefully being able to wiggle back into sims because I miss my sims, but not stressing out about it. So number 11, a cute little pair of mittens, which I might need. North Carolina is under like a foot of snow right now and we're here with like just the light drizzle between some leaves. So we might actually see a lot more snow in these vlogs, ironically, when we go south. But today, oh, color, color, color. Wait, what is this? <laughs> I thought it was like more peas and little pea pies, but it's little green cats. That actually gives me a lot of ideas for next year because I'm gonna do a whole bunch of pea pod themes. I wonder if I should do like little green pea potty animals. Hmm, ideas are coming. Ideas are coming for all my creative projects and my, my happiness projects that I want to do. But this is funny. So little green cats, I'm going to pretend they're pea cats. They're little tiny pea cats that pop out of pea pods and they're going to be uh, part of my theme for next year. Oh my gosh, some of them are so rude. <laughs> and some of them are really cute. Look at those. Oh, I like them. You guys, they're here. They're here, the first wave of really, really, really cool things is here. Oh my gosh, time to open some packages. Oh my gosh, they look so good. These are becoming some of my new favorite ways to do the postcards and they're fantastic. As usual, these are the uh, postcards, well as usual, some of you guys may not know about it, but on our Patreon tier, we have a flying squirrel tier where every month we send out postcards around the world and it's taken me a little while to figure out how I'm going to do that and especially when I was so unwell the last few months it was hard to kind of get into the rhythm of creating a po patreon postcard sometimes they're real postcards like the ones i brought home from london with the little frowny frog which was really cute and sometimes they're things that i actually physically paint and create and lately i have just really fallen in love with kind of doing little themes uh the idea that starting next year when i'm gonna be kind of completely revamping my patreon to make it because nobody really has the same favorite series, I'm kind of going to lighten it up a little bit in a way to make it more community based uh, rather than just like zoo crafting perks based. And I'm really excited for where that's going to go and how we're going to make things. But one of the things I kind of got into my head that I want to do is start doing like a little theme package every month. Uh, and so this November, the theme, which I don't have the other half of, but the theme was the Racing with the Stars that we did with our Star Stable series and Rose Stone and Thistledown and our big adventures we had. And I'm actually like shaking a little bit holding this because it looks so beautiful and we're getting ready to actually make more Star Stable or I'm getting ready to make more Star Stable. I just finished up recording something else to help kind of fill in the second layer of videos for December. But I'm rambling because I'm so excited for these. Look at how beautiful they are. Once again, this is done by our official artist, Alari, and she has done a fantastic job. I'm like shaking a little bit, portraying just that beauty of racing through the sunflower fields with Thistledown, our tiny little bunny you see. He has his ears flapping in the wind. He's having a great time. We've got Rose Stone with her sunflowers in her mane and her tail. And I just love how this captures that spirit of adventure and exploration with her so much. So these are created for the November postcards. They're late by far, but they're going to be packaged with December postcards, which I'm really excited about because they have one of the very first 
extra perks. There's a couple, the reason that the November postcards are late is because there's something else that's supposed to be coming that's really exciting and kind of helping me experiment and learn how to make really fun little things, physical things to be able to hold from our community. And it needs to come, it's due in a couple days and I want it like now, I want to be able to play with it. But I'm gonna get the postcards ready for when that comes and I'll show you guys what will happen. But there's more stuff that's going to be going out to theme with the uh, with the month that we had and with the star stable theme, but it's so pretty. I'm actually put printing the postcards. Um, it's more expensive, but it's a soft touch postcard. So it's not glossy and it's not thin like the postcards that you can find at the store are. It's actually a soft touch. It feels kind of velvety. It's pretty thick. Uh, it, it's more like a trading card sort of now. I feel like like it's more like uh, kind of like a cross between a postcard, but more like a trading card more than anything. I actually took off the back. The back used to be made and designed to look just like postcards and I actually got rid of that to do more personalized messages and to do it really pretty so it feels more like kind of like a, a trading picture. What should I call these? They're kind of like collectibles actually. They're kind of like collectibles now rather than being postcards and I really love that and I love that working with Alari and some of her fantastic artist friends we're working on creating more of a theme every month and giving bonuses out for those themes and as time goes on I'm going to be able to figure out how to make those things more complex and I might eventually make it so that, because uh, I usually have a couple extras, I might make it so that I'll just like put together little bonus things for the Etsy and like put like the theme of the month if I have anything left uh, up on the Etsy shop in limited quantity just because I know not everybody can be a patron um, and then it would also help to recoup all the bonuses that I'm starting to uh, to buy. But. That is a fun idea. I'm actually really looking forward to that because the idea of making like a little monthly themed kit and set and maybe even being able to go so far as to make some sort of trading card <laughs> would be really cute. I would love to make like zoo crafting uh, or animal fact or just like pixel biology community trading cards that I could get to put in with like every pin order or whatever else we sell in our shop uh, when I reopen it one day and to send out with the monthly Patreon postcards. I think that'd be really fun because it'd be cute to send out like, I don't know, a chickenberry or a patches trading card uh, and just keep the theme, the designs pretty consistent and just make it fun. So I'm thinking about all of those things and that's why I'm so excited about this, but I'm really excited. We actually had to move the December postcard that was originally created, which is Sims Medieval themed, to next month because I'm waiting for another package to arrive with some perks. Uh, but we have a beautiful new December card that Alari and I designed, and she did a fantastic job on a Christmas niche cookie tree, which I am so happy with. There's a niece with a whole bunch of nuts around her neck. We have Dolly in the background. Look at all, look, we've got Yuki slash Lala and Tata hanging out in the top of the cookie tree. And the Cookie Tribe is becoming one of my favorite Nicheling roleplay series that we've done with Niche. And I'm loving it. And we have episodes of it all month long. Don't worry, they're actually already done. Just um, here behind the scenes, you're getting a little FYI that they are actually already done. And I can tell you the drama starts ramping up pretty quickly, uh, which is really fun. But I love this so much. And again, I'm doing it so it's not like a postcard anymore, but it's like a collectible picture because there's only a certain quantity of them that I print every month and that'll be it. Um, wow, this and the, the they're so soft and like really thick now. Uh, the, I always felt like the other postcards were kind of flimsy in a way and their corners could get bent easily. Not these guys. These guys are like proper colorful collectibles. So I, they're almost like mini posters now. So I really love that. But a sneak peek of what's going out with uh, that is gonna be some cookies. Cookies! <laughs>
<laughs> these are actually the cookie emojis that we use in our stream and I'm sending out the cookies uh, they would have been a different kind of sticker style and design that would be a little smaller and in more quantity for people if I had been able to have more time but I'm still exploring manufacturers for those things because these are all perks and I have to be careful until I open my Etsy shop up again or get streaming and can get more donations I have to be careful with my budget because I'm already getting art for the designs I'm already getting uh, like the actual physical postcards the stamps are expensive most of our flying squirrel patrons are international and so I'm like paying a lot in stamps every month uh, but it's totally worth it to be able to send out all of that fun but we have the cookies which are actually the emoji stickers or the emojis and man I would love to do another round maybe get some more cookies some fun cookie designs but speaking of circular stickers I also have about 1,200 of these that just came as a way to encourage myself to grab our Stay Curious stickers. These go out with every pen order and I haven't shipped my pens in a long time because I've been so busy, but I want to start doing more stuff. I want to start making clay mushrooms again. I want to make more pen designs and raise some of those proceeds for different charities. I want to be able to have fun with the art side of it. So it's not actually coming from a desire to sell merchandise. It's entirely coming from a desire to start playing more with art. And one of the ways you can self fund that is by putting things up on an Etsy shop, but I think we're going to switch to a Shopify shop pretty soon. Um, and yeah, the, these, these, I wanted to use a lot of them for myself, but these stay curious stickers are so much fun to use. They're very colorful. They have little itty bitty bugs on them. They do say stay curious on them and they are special things that I sent out with all of the postcards are all of the, the pin orders and that I send out on occasion in the Patreon postcards too. So those are fun to have and I can't believe I got 1,200 of them, but those specifically were on a good sale because they're just a bonus item that goes in. So snag that and finally, I have to hide this before he comes home. The squirrel calendar. <laughs> This is the first time I made a calendar and I actually did it really, really, really fast for all intents and purposes because I didn't want to like lose out on getting it shipped to me so I could hide it before Christmas. So looking back, I probably would have photoshopped some of my squirrels a little, filling in some spots there, tweaking the color of their fur here. But as it is, I just put the pictures as they were into the different months. But we have nuts about squirrels, the 2019 calendar. This will be Chips's Christmas present from me, one of a few of them, because he always asks for that squirrel calendar. And all of these pictures will be of moments that we were with each other and on our walks together. So every month he will be able to flip it and he will be able to see squirrels that we have actually seen beginning with Jan January and patches in the snow. So we have patches in the snow from a previous year right here. I love it. It actually turned out really well. I'm glad I had such high quality pictures. Then we have another one of patches in the snow for February because this is this is Michigan. Let's not kid ourselves. We need at least a few snowy months on these calendars for it to count. So this is patches in the snow again. Another one of my favorite pictures of him. I'm so excited. I hope I hope Chips likes this. I hope it won't be boring to see pictures that we've seen before. This is a little baby red squirrel slightly out of focus on purpose who dashed down and talked to us one day when we were on a walk together it is so cute that's gonna be March March is my birthday month so I wanted to use one of my favorite pictures then we have another baby another baby squirrel this is April when it starts to get warm and the babies start to show up and this April is when we found this baby squirrel who stole my heart oh my gosh he's so cute those big eyes and he was staring out of a tree cavity on a walk that we go on his tree was actually on the corner of a busy street but we have since seen more baby squirrels raised there and a nuthatch family moved in for a little while so very important to note how those tree cavities are used again and again and again then this was one of the most interesting squirrels we ever saw it is a melanistic gray squirrel which means that it is a black furred squirrel but it's actually of the gray squirrel species you do see a melanistic twist to them on occasion what you don't normally see is the body melanistic and the tail cinnamon but he is basically a mishmash of co 
quote genetics, most likely from inbreeding. Uh, but he was really cool and he knocked over our feeder and was eating there one day. And he's one of the most unique squirrels I have a picture of. So we've got him, we've got Patches. <laughs> Because, you know, June starts to get hot. We have got two baby squirrels that we actually saw in the summer. Not related to the baby squirrel in the tree bowl, but look at that. Chips told me to look up one day when we were on a walk, and that was what I saw. And it was so cute. So we've got those little baby squirrels. We have, uh, you know, August is when you start thinking about the harvest in the forest. So this was one of our favorite squirrels, kind of hidden back there to change things up a little bit that we saw. This is a red squirrel who was sassing us out and then fell asleep like that, looking down at us from way up in an oak tree uh, when we were sitting on the deck in the summer. So this is gonna be the September squirrel, but it is a red squirrel. I didn't have any pictures of the flying squirrels that were good enough for the calendar, unfortunately. But we do have four species of squirrel that hang out around here that I try to get tons of pictures of. I've only ever seen the flying squirrel a few times though, at night when she comes to raid my bird feeder. I saw her like last year a lot, but I don't know if she still lives nearby. Then this is Patches in the pumpkin from this year. <laughs> so Patches having a good time with the pumpkin for October. November, this is actually a small red squirrel who was completely unafraid of us, had probably never seen a human before, deep in the woods of Upper Michigan when we were on a walk. And he just sat there and ate from his catch because these species of red squirrels will actually develop a catch of seeds and a catch of pine cones to eat from, rather than like going out and having a whole bunch of different hiding places like mini species. They have one main midden patch where they have all of their pine cones gathered. And he was sitting on his midden patch just eating pine cones and we just sat like not two feet away from him, walked up to him, sat on the ground and took pictures with him for probably 30 or 40 minutes and he ate the whole time and didn't have a problem with us so he's one of our most special memories of our adventures to the UP the up and then finally a picture of patches looking like he is sipping a cup of cocoa and nibbling on a nut for December when the snows will return and hopefully next year I will make another squirrel calendar for chips and I but what a colorful, amazing assortment of creations. And I can't believe with the immense commission help of our fantastic artist, and then a little bit of pushing myself to try to figure out how does one make a calendar, we have all of these fun perks and more coming. Oh. All right, back to work. Okay, Psyduck is still in the Pokeball, but today was amazing because using the new system that we have developed, I only have two more days to do, two or two more episodes, two more episodes to make, which I am so excited. I may try to push myself to make tonight, but it's very late and I think that I'm going to fall asleep soon. <laughs> so I probably won't, but we have two more episodes and then I will have two, not one, but two videos every single day until we come home January 5th done not uploaded because youtube hates videos that are uploaded more than about five days ahead of time so i have to upload them all remotely which leaves the very terrifying idea of like what if the videos don't work oh my goodness what if my computer shuts down when we're gone oh my goodness so note to self back up all of the videos that i need to upload onto my external hard drive just in case so i can upload them where no matter where i am but that aside basically what i'm saying is it worked Chips's system worked. Chickenberry's system even <clears throat> did work. And instead of being stressed, instead of being so anxious, instead of having to have this feeling where I'm like, I'm supposed to be having fun now, I need to swallow the fact that I'm not working and just accept that there's no videos going out and I need to be having fun now. Instead of having that tension come into my life, I am looking forward to hanging out with my friends because I know that at least something will be done. It may not be everything. It may not be everything I wanted. It may not be everything that people request. I actually took a glance just a second ago at the main channel comments. The top three newest comments were, and I quote, uh, well, I won't quote exactly because I don't want it to be easy who, like obvious who it was, but comment number one, where's Parkosaurus and where is Wolf Quest? <laughs> Comment number two. Can you play more Ultimate Forest Simulator? 
I haven't played that in like two years, but I'm glad to see it still has bands. And comment number three, can you please play more Pokemon? Which I can totally do. But those are the top three newest comments on the main channel. So when I say that I am letting go of explaining my schedule to people ever again, it's so I can free up all of the energy that I would normally have spent stressed and going, None of those were what I have worked so hard to pre-record. These people are going to be so disappointed. I'm just letting it go. I have almost 7,000 videos. I don't know any other independent creator with 7,000 videos on YouTube. I don't. Uh, I know of groups. I, I know Game Grumps does a lot. I know there's... I don't know anybody. <laughs> <laughs> who has quite as many as I do. So I'm hoping something will satisfy people. And plus it's fun. Instead of looking at it and being like, oh, December's the most important month. Get going, Siri. Hurry. I'm just letting go. I can only control so much about YouTube and I'm just going to have to trust Chips when he says that as long as we can have rent and a roof over our head, then that's all we need. And I'm just going to have to trust that January, February, March, and April will not be as scary as they sometimes are. And who knows, this new system, I'm rambling like this because I'm so happy and so excited. With this new system, I only have two days left to cover two videos every single day until we come back. And again, they're not going to be the most popular things, even though I wish they were, but this is an experiment that it can be done. So I'm really excited for the next year because hopefully using this new system, I will be able to have the reassurance of like, okay, it's not what I want, but you know, there's two or three videos going out the next few days. Uh, like there's two videos a day going out for the next four days. So I'm going to spend the next four days working on writing Warrior Cat scripts and recording it and editing it really well. That's what I'm hoping for, because previously my entire life has been caught up in like, okay, I have to record uh, this episode, this episode, and this episode today and get them out by tomorrow maximum. So I would record like 30 minutes of something and have to stop and process it. And that was just interrupting the flow. And today guys, I'm rambling about all this because I had the best time ever recording i had so much fun because for me when i can play a game for a solid two to three hours that's when i really get immersed in all of it that's when the stories start feeling more and more and more vibrant and they come to life and there's a reason for that as i've pointed out by pointing you guys again and again to that book called deep work by cal newport he goes into depth and so does the book wrapped about how our brains are wired to do that. We are wired, once we clear away distractions, to be able to immerse ourselves in a deeper level thinking, like I do when I'm telling stories, for at least 90 minutes. We work best if we are in a 90 minute chunk, and we're gonna see the most productive oomph of our ideas in that 90 minutes to four hours. Four hours is the maximum. You actually cannot expect more deep work, more of that really, really, really intricate level thinking where your mind can just go off in a billion directions and make connections that didn't exist before, which is required if you're doing like really active, changing every second the game's doing something, role-playing stories. I need to be able to make connections that weren't there before. I need to be able to play in a way that's not just reciting what I see, but being able to build up entire worlds. And uh, that you can only actually do for four hours a day before it becomes a, a sunken, like you're, you're just gonna lose out. So there's a psychological reason behind why I love batch recording, batching as I call it, or cascading. Cause it feels like I'm just like combo, 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 like combo bonuses of having fun. And today I did that all day long. And I can't believe it. I didn't record a single video yesterday other than my vlog. And that's because I was so busy on my feet with Christmas cookies. And I couldn't believe it because we're about to leave. But guys, I'm just saying this because I was so happy. I would have never, two weeks ago even, allowed myself to record like almost three weeks worth of Star Stable. But today I recorded 10 or 12 episodes of Star Stable. <laughs> And I was able to do more intricate story building. I was able to do more, better cuts. I was able to take longer to make one episode than I ever have been able to do before because I knew that I don't have to worry about videos going out tomorrow 
as long as there's at least two and so I should just focus on this and as a result I knocked it out of the ballpark that release from stress there I think I recorded 15 16 videos today and I'm still full of energy and 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 excited and I'm ready to go for more so this whole ramble is just to say it's worth it to change your systems it's also worth it to take the pressure off of yourself because as I've mentioned the last few days, I'm still kind of doing the same thing. I'm still recording all day long, still doing my chores, but I'm still making time to bike every morning. I'm making time for chips. We frosted the rest of the cookies tonight. We did it as a couple again, which is why I didn't end up recording it. We made dinner together. Um, we spent a little bit of the morning together. I spent some time doing chores today, and then I had a great time recording. And so the stress level is like, yeah. We're in a peaceful, happy little paradise compared to what it was two weeks ago getting ready for this trip. And the only thing that has changed is my perception of how I'm doing things. That it's okay if I only have two videos go out a day. And that's great, actually. And just letting go of what I wanted the perfect December schedule to be. Man, letting go is the most powerful thing I have ever learned in my life next to boundaries. And I've only learned it, both those things, in the last few months. And I really hope I've encouraged some of you guys to read books, take whatever effort it takes to understand how you can really learn to just let go and reframe things, and how you can learn to set boundaries that help you grow and protect you. Because this is fantastic. So, yeah, to you guys, once again, I have just spent the entire day sitting inside of this office. To me, I have been off on journeys. I have been taking care of guinea pigs in Amy's pet clinic, and I have been uh, taking care of class pets and talking about my Sims 4 series and how Fern is probably going to grow up to run a wonderful little hands-on education center for children about wildlife, and I'm so excited about that. I have been riding through a frosted, beautiful, forest full of ice and snow and silver foxes and mystery and I guess I can show some of you guys some sneak peek so a few spoilers for Star Stable coming up in just a second to show you guys I haven't just been here in my office to me to me I've been off on these huge adventures and because I was able to so happily be immersed for hours in creating them I feel like I have been away and I'm back now like when you read a really really great book and you feel like you've been gone and you come back but you've been there the whole time you know what I mean and that's so fantastic so here's just a few sneak peeks of what I was up to in Star Stable today so no peeking if you are really worried about that So to me, I have been off in a beautiful snowy woodland. I have been visiting really interesting characters. I have been developing a new story that I loved. And just to put this all in like to context a little bit more, in the past, because Star Stable updates every week, I would only let myself record a maximum of three videos at a time. So just as I was hitting that, you know, close to 60 minutes where you start hitting your peak of being into a project, a peak of being immersed, I would break myself out of it because I can't get ahead of the updates. People will be so mad if I don't do something with the update that might come on Wednesday. So then I would have to suspend my enjoyment of Star Stable and suspend what I was doing until the weekly update to see if I had to drop everything I was doing and rush the update. So that's actually like a symptom of being totally distracted. And I mean, yeah, I love the weekly updates and I love showing them as soon as they're fresh, but it was really throwing me out of being able to enjoy the story. So that's just one example of the many, many, many series that I do. And I guess it's kind of nerve wracking to talk about this a little bit because some people will get really offended that an episode is made not 
right at, like the same day it's really hard to explain some people feel like it's really inauthentic or there's not much of a connection if what they're seeing wasn't made after you had the opportunity to read all of their input on the previous episode um and i i can see where that could come from but i really think that that is where i have actually been exhausted in the past is thinking that i had to keep everything really fresh and recent because it was like waking up every morning and having to write four or five essays and put them out <laughs> that day uh to put it into frame of reference so here's just a public declaration of hey creators if you batch it's a good thing for everybody you're going to be able to immerse yourself deeper in your work you're going to be able to have more time to do edits you're going to be able to really expand your world and your story and most importantly you're probably going to be able to take care of your own well-being because you will know that the work that you put in in one day will go on for many many days not just one day but multiple days to support you and provide something wonderful for your community to enjoy it's going to seem ridiculous to a lot of people that I have been so nervous about batching and that I have felt so like almost anxiety stressed that like, oh, what if they find out that I recorded this episode last week instead of today? Some people do get mad at me about those kinds of things, but this is just to say, see all this happiness? This is because I am getting closer and closer to knowing that everything is going to be taken care of and people are going to be enjoying our adventures like they're brand new to them. Well, I am going to go a week later, a week after they're made, and make gingerbread houses with my niece. And that is amazing. That is the magic of the time bubbles that we can create in this digital platform that I was kind of talking about last night. But I'm done rambling about those things uh, for now. And that's probably as close as I'll come to to talking about my schedule and the details behind it again. But I think it's important because I know many of you guys are creators. And I don't know if I'm alone in feeling that intense guilt of recording something like a week ahead of when it comes out. Probably not. That's probably a unique weird Siri thing. Learned my lesson. <laughs> so today, uh, my three joy moments are actually the comments that you guys have continued to leave so kindly in the comments of these vlogs. I normally don't let myself look at comments during the day. I let myself look at comments at a specific time and kind of go through the main channel really quickly. But the vlog channel, I just feel called to look at them again in a way I haven't since our community was very, very, very small on the main channel. Or like I peek in on the Discordians on our Patreon and see what they're up to. Because you guys have been so kind and the things that you have said are so insightful and so encouraging. So just thank you for that so much. This is my own personal playground as I figure out who I am and who I want to be and use being accountable to myself in front of a camera as a way to encourage my own growth and it's working amazingly in less than two weeks already and I feel great and it means a lot to know that some of the little rambles I say at least give you guys some food for thought or even make you happy or give you an idea of something that you might want to try in your life so thank you so much for that that's definitely one of my three joy moments my other joy moment is definitely that Chips' students like the cookies and that it was very easy to finish frosting the last ones. I was really worried that it would be super stressful to finish frosting the cookies. Turns out if you break up baking 100 cookies and frosting them into a multi-day affair, it's a lot easier. We just took the cookies out of the fridge, I made some fresh frosting, and with his help, we went through and finished all of them within half an hour. So that was kind of amazing. If you two are going to get the, the bee in your bonnet to create 100 Christmas cookies and frost all of them yourself, try breaking it up into making the dough one day, cutting it out and baking another day, frosting it another day, maybe even a few more days mixed in there because it was much less stressful today. Even if it was a, a fun stress challenge yesterday, it was just completely less stressful today. So that's my, my second joy moment. 
and my third joy moment won't make any sense until all of those Star Stable episodes come out over the following weeks, but the answer is Yeti. <laughs> and when you guys find out about Yeti, I'm very excited because it's a very hilarious, fun, quirky little story that I had extra time to edit in and plan in our Star Stable series because I wasn't rushed to drop everything hurry and hurry for the videos that are due tomorrow. Now nothing is due except making sure a certain number is done. Uh, and I'm so excited because it's looking like I might actually get a chance to work on almost nothing but Pokemon, Katamari, Minecraft stuff, and Sim stuff when I am actually in North Carolina. And that is like my own little celebration. If I could spend time with my favorite series, that would be amazing. <laughs> And then my favorite series change pretty regularly, but Sims and Zoo Crafting are always going to be at the tippy top, just so you know. Uh, and not that Zoo Crafting, worst case scenario, Zoo Crafting may come out starting next year so that I can start completely fresh. Ideally, it would come out sooner, but I want to do it right and not be rushed. And I want to really keep it going. Zoo Crafting is more of a personal challenge in a good way. And I'm really excited that you guys like the idea of doing like those little donations and learning more about animals every month. Uh, but speaking of things, <sighs> I talk so much. <laughs> but speaking of uh, like getting things in the mail, because I was thinking about the World Wildlife Foundation little information plaques about adopting an animal every month for zoo crafting. I got a package in the mail today that I didn't expect, and it is actually what we are going to be opening today. I opened it just enough to realize what it was, and I got really excited. But this is actually from Shattered Earth, and I've shown you guys her pins and her work before. And on a whim, I took some of my allowance and I became one of her uh, pen club members on her Patreon, because I was curious about how that would work. And the last couple months have been really fun. So this month is actually her December pens. I'm pretty sure these are her December pens. And this month, she included some bonuses. So all of this is actually from her exclusive like Patreon tier. So you join her Patreon and then she sends out pins and other things every month as a pin club thing. Really cool. It turns out that's very popular for a lot of pin creators is to do a pin club. And I had no idea. And I'm joined Shattered Earths. And then this is what just came today. And I'm kind of amazed. So hang on guys. Oh my gosh. <laughs> This is really cool and you're gonna see why in just a second. So to begin with, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. When you guys see the bonus item, cause I'm in a tier that gets like a surprise bonus item. When you guys see the bonus items that came, I'm just like, I can't believe this. And this is thanks for pledging to the December 2019 pin pack. And this time we have got, oh, that's so cute. <laughs> Some nice goodies. I love it. I love it. Okay. This is the nice goodies that she's included. You guys are going to be amazed when you see the actual gaze, but we have some little, um, oh, come on, I know what these are called, Marimo, the moss balls, which I really am shocked I don't have yet. I've wanted them for years, but we have little Marimo. We've got her Bichu and her sketch cats that she does. They're really, really cute. Look at that little reindeer. Perfect Christmas stickers. I love those. But that's from Shattered Earth's exclusive pen pack. And then her exclusive pens this month. I think you get bonus items from her shop as well. And because she's been working on clearing out her Overwatch <laughs> pins, I think I have more of her Overwatch pins. I don't even know which characters these are, but they are bonus pins from her shop. Probably because she's wrapping up the year, but that is so cool. I have no idea who they are, but we'll find out. However, we have Snowflake Cat look at little snowflake cat i'm pretty sure this is one of the ones that was part of her monthly pins that are like exclusive to her patreon if only i could do that oh my gosh check back next year maybe i'll have like some sort of wildlife club that we can do and it will just be like really fun wildlife stuff every month and like a little coupon that you could um you could redeem for a character in zoo crafting that would be really cute and then her other pins because I'm in a tier that gets like usually just two, but I think she sent out a lot of extra goodies this month. Let me go ahead. Oh, I don't want to hurt anything. Oh, it's part of this huge pack. Oh my gosh. I think I got a bonus snowflake cat. 
what oh my gosh <laughs> okay so here's what we have oh my gosh it spins that is amazing we have another snowflake cat right here we have got a spinning Pichu, which is so cute. That's what she calls her Pikachus. And it, what is that? Is that like a hot tamale? Is that, and a, oh, it's a hot Cheeto. <laughs> I would have never guessed that. Oh my gosh, okay. And then finally, the thing that had me absolutely, like my jaw was on the ground, a static, and I couldn't believe it. I could not believe it. But this is an extra goodie that she included in, in the bag this month. And it's an actual Polka Cafe bag. Oh my gosh. That is a strawberry Bulbasaur. I didn't know I needed a strawberry Bulbasaur in my life. I have my poinsettia Bulbasaur. But oh my gosh, that is so cute. So this was really exciting. This was way more stuff. You normally get like two two pins and a sticker so oh if only I could make like some sort of wildlife pin club or even just like a wildlife pack of some kind oh that'd be so fun but these I'm just so tickled okay I'm way too excited because I've been working so hard today I actually have to now start processing a whole bunch of those videos and I'm just happy I know I've talked a lot about schedule stuff again today but I know a lot of you guys are creators uh Delphron I've seen you around too hi <laughs> And I know that we all have our different ways of creating, but I just hope this can be encouraging to continue to tweak the systems until it actually works for you. And sometimes that means that you may actually be kind of physically seeming to be doing the same things every day, but emotionally you have a different investment in it. I'm still recording all day long and I love it, but I'm not beating myself up thinking, oh, you were supposed to have zoo crafting like three days ago, start going out and you don't even have a single episode yet. I've let go of the specifics of the schedule and I'm focusing on just knowing that I'm doing the work that will take care of things and the work that will take care of me. And ironically, that's actually making it so the more complicated series suddenly have time to be created. So I don't know what that, means and I can't really explain the specifics of it but I just really want to encourage you guys if there's something that you've wanted to do if you wanted to write a book if you really wanted to work on a special creative project to look at the way you have things set up and maybe find a way to let go of some things so that you aren't quite such a perfectionist about it or you can really question why you have the expectations that you don't have that time to do it because it has to be like x y or z i don't know just maybe that'll be important for somebody else too so i'm done with all of that rambling i've got to go show chips my adorable polka cafe bag and my little bichu the polka cafe bag is going to hold a whole bunch of stickers when we go traveling so that's useful and i will see you guys later bye guys <laughs>